I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we're going to return to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're going to do a little bit more with combo boxes or drop down lists as they're sometimes called. And we're going to create a combo box that has multiple columns. So uh, sometimes it's necessary for you know, somebody doing data entry to see many different things about a particular selection in a drop down box. And so it's necessary to make some combo boxes that have, you know, two, three or four columns. And in this, in this uh, exercise, we're going to do one that has five columns and we're going to show how to uh, bind the value of it to either the selection that you see in the list or to an ID that's sort of hidden from the user. So without further ado, let's get to our combo boxes with multiple columns in Microsoft Access. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the file that we've been using for some time. I've filtered all the objects to staff and I'm going to create a couple objects with the name staff in them. And so we're going to go create and then new table design. And uh, we're going to make a list of staff and I'll just put uh, the ID, the last name, first name. And uh, we're going to add uh, some other fields like position and their certification level and uh, and maybe like uh, some random stuff like like sector uh, or or like you know region or something like that just so that we have some columns and this would be uh, kind of similar to how you might select uh, put columns in your drop down box uh, depending on what you need and what your users need to see okay so I'll add a region on there and uh, I'll add um, say uh, uh, a sector within the region I don't know I'm just making this stuff up and uh, and we'll do the same thing we'll say that it's got a name like Alpha Bravo or something like that and then uh, these are the columns that we want to see in our drop-down list and then our staff ID is going to be the actual ID that we might use in another table and we'll throw a primary key on there uh, which is good practice for all your tables and then we'll save that and I'll just call it staff and uh, there we go we've got a table for our staff and uh, then we can go ahead and we can just make some uh, some additions to our staff table and then I can add some names like uh, John Smith uh, we'll give him a position of doctor uh, we'll add a certification level of uh, I don't know say one um, and uh, we'll put them in region A in sector Bravo and uh, and then we can do the same we'll add another one and uh, we'll add Mary Harris and uh, she's a nurse and uh, and then she has uh, similar characteristics and then I'll skip to the end here so you don't have to watch me putting all of these in okay and I sort of jumped to the end there I've added all of these uh, people to my table and like I said these are the fields that we want to to show and then we've got an ID field that we can optionally um, select and sometimes that's necessary when you just have an ID as a foreign key in another table so we'll go create and then we'll go form design and then we can start uh, our combo box okay and uh, to get our combo box uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, click on the detail section of our form and we'll go to the controls. Uh, these controls might be spread out across your ribbon uh, or in my case I'm using a very small window so they're in a drop down so we'll choose the combo box uh, from our drop down and it gives it might give you the wizard and you can just cancel out of the wizard um, as we are going to do everything by hand which is the way that you should learn how to do these things. Um, as you progress. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get to our property sheet there. So we can click on our combo box and if you don't see the property sheet you can right click and go to properties and then you can uh, type in CBO staff which will be um, the name of our combo box and we can refer back to that later which I'll show you a little bit of code on how you can query it 
by the name to see what's selected at any time. And then we click on the ellipsis there uh, to bring up our row source and it'll ask us to select a table or to create a query here. And this is all stuff from our previous videos, um, but I'll click on our staff table and I'll go add and then close. And that's going to give me the staff table in our query. Um, so these are the things that we want to show in our drop down list. So we're going to pick some fields and, uh, and we'll go ahead from there. And for our uh, full name in our drop down, we'll make it look a little bit more natural by adding uh, the last name and then comma first name. And then we can uh, sort that ascending. So that'll be our first column. Our second column, we'll just choose position and then cert certification level, then region, and then sector. And uh, that'll give us a bunch of columns um, on which our drop down list will uh, select from. So we can save that by uh, just closing it there, and then you'll get a pop up. Um, and you can just say yes to save that. And then you'll see up in the right there, it's got the select statement in the row source. And so from there, um, we'll save it and uh, just so that we don't uh, lose any of our work. And then we've got our filtered list on the left there. So now the form shows up. And you can see that if I just close it and go to the form, you can see it has one column uh, with our first column, the concatenated name in there. And uh, But what we want to do is we want to um, add some more columns so that the user has some more information to work with. Okay, and so from here we're going to work in these tabs at the top and we're going to put together our, our combo box. And so you can see we've got our bound column of one, which means the last name, first name will be put into whatever field we bind that to. And then on the format tab we have the column count. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that up to five and uh, and then we're going to adjust the column widths so that it's not automatically selected so that the columns will actually show. And my um, system is set up for centimeters, so I'm going to put uh, three, uh, two, two, and two and two uh, for my five columns. That's like one inch and just under an inch for the rest of them. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll say, yep, the 16 rows for the list rows is fine. That's how many it'll show. Uh, but we're going to set the list width to 11, which is the combination of all of those guys um, in the column width so that, the, uh, so that it's all consistent. And then we can go take a look at what we've got. So from there, now, now we can see we've got all of our columns in there, which is uh, exactly what we wanted. But we cannot see sort of like the column names, which is something that we want. Uh, for this case. So we'll go ahead and we're going to choose column heads and we're going to set that to yes and then we'll save that and then we can go take a look at our drop down list. So now we have the column names at the top and, uh, and then we've got our list and that would extend down to 16 entries um, if we had selected 16. And just to demonstrate you can use uh, control G to open the immediate window and then you can type in uh, forms and then staff form and then the name of your combo box uh, which is CBO staff. You'll see that it returns the value that's been stored there after we selected something and it's Winston Chen. So, uh, so we can store uh, Winston in there but for some cases if you have say foreign keys in another table uh, you might want to store the ID for the combo box and then that's something that's very useful to do. So we're going to do that now. Again, we go to our properties sheet as we have our combo selected. And uh, we're going to add a column onto the end. First, we're going to change the column count to six. And then we'll, we'll add a column with zero length onto the end of our, uh, onto the end of our columns. And uh, that's going to give us uh, another uh, column in our drop down and then we'll fill that just by double clicking on our staff ID which will put it at the end of our query and just like we did last time we can uh, hit the X and then say yes I'd, I'd like to save that and then we've got our uh, combo box 
almost ready to go. So we'll, we'll go to our data tab and change the bound column to six instead of one, and then we can check it. So we'll go ahead and go into our form in form design and we'll make a selection. We'll choose uh, uh, Sarah Johnson this time. And uh, so now she's selected in the combo box and she has an ID. So we'll go back to our control G into our uh, immediate window and we can just put our cursor back on the same statement we made before and hit enter. And now you can see that there's a four there uh, that's being stored in that combo box instead of uh, instead of the name and so you could put that into you know a foreign key in another table so if you just had the staff ID on a sale or something like that um, then you could store it like that um, so going back we can say hey uh, what if I wanted to store that value or what if I wanted to bind my combo box to a table that had some events in it or something like that so we'll go ahead and we'll create a table. Um, we'll, we'll just go to create and then uh, we'll do table design. We'll do something very, very simple. We'll make a event, event ID and we'll make that an auto number. <clears throat> and then we'll, uh, we'll put staff ID as if it was uh, you know, a foreign key in another table that we wanted to store the event in there to say who made, who uh, caused the event and then we'll add a primary key and we'll save that as our staff event table. And uh, so now you've got a table that you could store events in um, in a very simple way. And, uh, and now, now we can bind, sort of bind our form to that. So <clears throat> in order to bind our form, I'll click in the gray area outside of the form and that'll take the property sheet to the properties for the form itself and I'm going to uh, click on or select the record source as our staff event table. So this form is going to look at the staff event table and of course we, we would like to a Dyna set in there because that's an updatable set and uh, we can move on from there. So I'll move our combo box up a little bit. Um, I don't know, just uh, for a little bit of uh, put, put some form to our form and then I'll go to our design, um, our design uh, tab on our ribbon and I'll select existing fields and you can do that by clicking on add existing fields and then just dragging uh, the field from the right hand side so that's a bound uh, field that's bound to the event comment um, and then the event ID which is an auto number that you wouldn't be able to adjust but we'll throw it in there anyway and then I'll just sort of zip this form up. It's most the most simple form you've ever seen, uh, but it has everything there except our combo is not bound to a field yet. And so what we'll do is we'll go back to our property sheet and then we'll click on our combo box and we can select the control source and we can set that to the staff ID, which is uh, also a number in our table. So now we have a bound um, control to the to our um, to our field uh, which will update the table and uh, so from there you can see it's sitting on a new record. No record has been entered yet um, so we could you know add um, Winston Chan as a record and have an event description something happened and then uh, we could add another record um, and choose somebody else and uh, type in um, something else happened um, some more stuff happened <laughs> and uh, and then uh, as you can see we're creating records in the table um, and our multi-column uh, drop-down box is showing us more data each time uh, than just a single column and so it's more useful for this case and so that's how you can uh, set up a, uh, a multi-column uh, drop-down list or combo box in Microsoft Access and uh, bind it to a table uh, for data collection. And after straightening out a few fields there to 
line them up. Um, you can make your form a bit more neat and uh, you can add as many records as you want using your multi-column drop-down. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion about uh, using uh, multiple column combo boxes in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. And if you have any questions or comments about what you saw today, please make sure to put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.